In today's video, we'll be looking at internet protocol layers and answering the question, why do we use the construct of layers to describe networks? Let's get started. Let's talk about protocol layers. You've heard me use this terminology a number of times already. So why layers? Layering is a convenience that allows us to organize, discuss, and even develop software to operate networks. It is an organization technique. This allows us to take the many pieces that make up networks and talk about them in a structured manner. Let's try applying the layering organization to air travel. Air travel is also a complex operation involving many steps. On the departure side, it begins with purchasing a ticket, then checking baggage, arriving at the gate to load on the aircraft, taking off from the runway, a routing operation that may continue at multiple increments along the aircraft's path, and then on the arrival side, we effectively reverse the process. The aircraft routing completes. There's a landing that corresponds to the takeoff. You unload at a gate, claim baggage, and of course we can't forget going back to the ticket counter to complain about the experience. Each of these layers implements a service and each of them relies on services provided by the layer below. So we define this layered structure in order to allow us to explicitly define the services that are expected of each component of the system. It's also a useful tool in the design of software, which allows us to modularize the system, meaning that individual components may be updated or improved as long as the interface between that component or that layer and the neighboring layers remains the same. Layering also has drawbacks, especially if done incorrectly, as it may cause certain layer interfaces to be unable to be updated, even if it could result in a large improvement for the system as a whole. In the internet stack, it is typically useful to talk about five layers. And you will note that the structure of our course roughly follows these layers as we move forward, starting from the top down. There is the application layer, supporting things like web or streaming video and email. Below that is the transport layer, which defines certain protocols that accept messages from and deliver messages to the application layer. Below that is the network layer, which is responsible for routing individual packets from one end of the network to the other. Individual links have their own protocols depending on the properties of that link. And at the very bottom, we have the physical layer with the physical wire and bits being physically transmitted across it. Hand in hand with the layering is the concept of encapsulation. Let's look at this example. The message is sent from the source application. It is then encapsulated in a segment at the transport layer with the transport layer header attached. This segment is then transferred to the network layer, which again encapsulates it, this time in a datagram with its own unique header type. This process is repeated at the link layer, which creates a frame by adding its own header and potentially a trailer as well. Network devices only function at certain layers of the stack. For example, a switch is commonly referred to as a layer two device, meaning it only processes the link layer and none of the higher layers. A router is a layer three device. It processes the physical link and network layer before forwarding the packet. To do this, it must decapsulate, meaning remove the link layer in order to pass the datagram to the network layer and process it, then forwards it and must re-encapsulate it in the link layer again. When the entire frame reaches the destination, it goes to the reverse process where each layer reads its own header and removes it as it works its way up the stack. You may also hear of the OSI reference model or the seven layer model. This was an early standard designed to represent all of the services potentially needed by different applications. However, the internet model was somewhat simplified from this. And so it doesn't represent two of the layers. These are the presentation and the session layer. If a particular application needs these layers, that application will have to implement them. That completes our discussion of protocol layers. Our next talk will be a brief overview of the history of the internet. See you then. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it to be useful, please click the like button. To be notified when more videos are posted for this class, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell.